Good morning, Facebook. Um, it's Gail, your favorite local bookseller at uh, New Story Community Books. We are a small independent bookstore in downtown Marshall, Michigan. I hope that everything is working. Everything just flipped on my screen. It always does this, and I think it, sends, it tends to work. But anyway, um, I'm Gail. I'm in downtown Marshall, Michigan at New Story Community Books. We are a local independent bookstore. Um, we specialize in selling both new and used books and all bookish gifty items um, to celebrate books and celebrate reading, literacy, fandoms, um, and all things nerdy and geeky as well. Um, we uh, also can ship anywhere in the continental U.S. Um, for a nominal or small shipping fee. Um, and if you order over $40 worth of materials from us pre-tax, um, then your book ship free. Um, the same goes for anybody in some of the local um, zip codes around um, our little store. Um, you can check out our website to see if you qualify because there's too many zip codes and Gail doesn't remember numbers. Um, but if you order $35 worth of mater materials pre-tax from us and you prepay for that, um, you can get free local delivery um, in our area. Right. Um, if you haven't already done so, please make sure to like our Facebook page um, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and also come and check us out in the store if you're able to do so. Um, we love having repeat customers and we love having new faces wander through our doors. Um, so today I am here to talk to you about some of our hot books, I guess you could say, that are coming off of our shelves and some suggestions for what you might want to read next if you've read some of these um, classes. Some of these are bestsellers that we've had for a long time um, and some of these are books that are recently ones that we can barely keep on the shelves. As soon as they come in, they're out, right? Um, so I'm going to talk about books by Taylor Jenkins Reid um, and what you might want to read if you've already read her books, all of her stuff. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about books by uh, Lucy Foley and um, what I call tough stuff memoirs. Those are one of my favorite genres to talk about. Um, it's uh, when someone goes through some kind of adversity, some kind of trial um, in their life. So it's a memoir, a biography, something that um, or not biography, autobiography, so it deals with specifically a time in a person's life or their overall life and things were not necessarily the nicest and it's not necessarily a humorous, um, a humorous journey, but I wanted to share some of those with you guys. So how this will work for um, our live video, I have posted the link to all of our live lists um, that should be in the description of this video and it should also be in the comments later on if it's not already. Um, but I've made some lists, put together some lists of these books and also more books, more titles, because I can't show you all the things um, that we have in store and that we're able to um, also order. We can order books both new and we can order books used as long as um, they are available used and we'll always find you the best price that um, best matches your budget. Right. Um, so how you can either reserve these books, you can comment below if we're um, on the live video itself and I'll periodically check the comments to make sure that I'm not missing anything. That's something that I have to get better at. Um, but you can also check out that list and you can reserve um, by either going to our website and reserving on our website. Um, you can call the store or you can email the store and you can find all of that information at our website, newstorybooks.com. So without further ado, let's get started and look at some of the books, which is why we're all here. Uh, like I said, if you haven't already done so, like this video, um, tag somebody in the comments or share this video with somebody that you know either likes these authors or likes these types of books. So we're going to get started with one that we cannot keep on the shelves, um, which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So this book has recently blown up um, the book talk and TikTok world, I guess you could say. Um, that, and even though it was released a few years ago, it has become wildly popular in the last few months. Um, and like I said, we can barely keep this on the shelves. So this is about, uh, it's a fictional story, um, but it's about a movie starlet, Evelyn Hugo, who has kind of been reclusive. She hasn't, um, she hasn't done a lot of, uh, of interviews or revealing anything about her personal life since she retired from acting. Um, and suddenly she reaches out to uh, a young reporter, a young news writer, uh, Monique Grant, who is kind of up and coming, and says that she will do an interview with Monique Grant, but only Monique Grant, no one else. Um, she has to do with this person. Monique has no idea why she's been selected for this, but it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And so Evelyn is telling Monique her story under the um, premise that that it will be it will be published um, at one point by Monique. And so it goes through how Evelyn Hugo 
became um, popular and how she went through her entire life. Um, she was married seven times. That's why it's called The Seventh Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And there's so many questions about why was somebody married so many times? What happened with all of this? Because she's been pretty um, quiet about her personal life. So it's kind of a tell-all tale. Um, I am currently reading this. I'm only about a quarter of the way through. I'm only on husband number two. Um, but if you are interested in purchasing this book, you can reserve one on our website. We do have some that are coming into stock very shortly and will be available for you. This one is not currently available um, for purchase. I just have it for showing, um, but you can reserve the ones that will be coming in next week. Hopefully, fingers crossed, should be coming in for us um, next week, or you can order one for the next time that they come in. So since I've not finished the book um, yet, but it is very good, I was very surprised because it's not necessarily something that I like to read. Um, since I haven't finished it, I can't say, oh, this is for sure something that you'll have a connection with. Um, but I was talking to another bookseller who has read the book, and she told me that if you have not already done so when you finish Evelyn Hugo, you should read one of Taylor Jenkin Reid's other books, Malibu Rising, because there are some connections um, between the two books. I know I talked about this one previously in a different live video. You can check out our other videos if you've not watched um, some of our other recommendation videos. Um, but this is also something that will kind of um, feed your feed your desire for potentially wanting to know some of the, the deep dark secrets, the, the perfection and what go, actually goes behind it, especially with those who um, have the glitz and the glamour and fame, right? Um, so this is set in the 80s and it's got a couple um, Nina Riva and her real sorry her Riva, the Riva family um, with her brothers and they're all throwing a massive party um, at the end of summer and then suddenly by the end of the evening the entire home their mansion goes up in flames and lots of secrets and drama is revealed um, throughout the course of this but I was told by another book so that there are connections between Evelyn Hugo and this book and if you haven't already pre-ordered your copy, if you've read either one of these, you should definitely pre-order. Um, Taylor Jenkins Reid is going to Jenkins Reid, excuse me, is going to release another book at the end of August um, called Carrie Soto is Back. Um, and I've been told that there are connections between all of these books as well because Carrie Soto, according to the other books that I talked to, is a very familiar name for those who have read these books. So if you haven't already checked it out, check out Malibu Rising, uh, Rising, excuse me, by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Another book that you might appreciate if you've read um, have, uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and you really like that that Hollywood glitz and glamour, the old style, um, and also knowing some of the things that go on behind the scenes, and also to prepare for the film that is going to be coming out very soon, you should check out Joyce Carol Oates's um, Blonde, which is um, kind of a reimagining of the the great actress Marilyn Monroe um, and what actually happened in her life. So there is going to be a film. I think it's like say it's on Netflix coming out in either late August or September. Can't remember. I've just seen a whole bunch of ads for it. It looks really good. Um, but this is the book that kind of inspired that. Um, it's been out for a minute because it's, you know, it says 20th anniversary. But if you are really looking for another book that'll feed that desire for Hollywood, glitz and glamour and the scandal um, and all of those things, this would be a book that you would definitely want to pick up and to read. It is a little bit thick, just letting you know about that. Um, but this is a great book. We do not have this one in use right now, but you can always check it on our website. You can reserve this on the list. You can contact the store um, and we can get a copy of Joyce Carol Oates' Blonde for you. And if you have read any of these books and you've got other suggestions, feel free to comment below um, just to give us other recommendations of what we might also um, be able to recommend to people who have read some of these books. So another book that you might also appreciate if you like, once again, that the, the scandal that goes behind the scenes from somebody who seems to have the perfect life. Um, you may like the book Mary Jane by Jessica Anya uh, Blau. Blau? Yes, Blau. Um, so this is set in the 70s, and it's a fictional story. Um, but it is about a young girl named Mary Jane, and she goes to get a respectable job for cleaning at um, a local home. Um, and inside it is an actual, like, even though it looks great on the outside, it's an actual mess, and that's because it is also the home of a, um, of a psychiatrist. Yeah, of a psychiatrist who has taken in a famous rock star and his movie star wife to try to help them out, um, with getting themselves, um, getting clean and off of some of the, the influences that have come up in their lives. And so this also allows this girl, this young girl, um, kind of a glimpse into what stardom is like um, and what 
uh, struggles people who rise to fame might be facing. So, and some of the scandals that go along with that, right? So, if you want, like, that backstory, uh, the drama, I guess I said, behind the scenes of those who appear to have everything that you could ever possibly imagine you might want to pick up a copy of Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Block. So another book that automatically comes to my mind with uh, after looking at slash reading Seven Husbands um, is The Liz Taylor Ring by Brenda Janowitz. Um, this is about a family of... Um, of people, there's a couple who are pretty, pretty well off and well to do, and also run in some of those famous circles. Um, and the wife, let me see if her name is, yeah, her name is Lizzie Morgan, um, and she has her affair, her not her affair, her uh, romance with Richie Schneider, um, and then she um, has a, they have an up and down relationship, and then there is a person who uh, that Liz had in her life previous um, who gave her a very very expensive uh, diamond ring and over the course of her life it was mysteriously vanished it was gone and then after um, she and her husband both passed away it magically not magically but mysteriously resurfaced and so her children um, come together to see this piece of history and to reminisce about what um, what their family was like and also they learned some learn some things that aren't necessarily so nice about the the idyllic past that they might remember. So um, we actually don't have this one in new. We have this in used right now. It is only $10, $9.95. Um, so if you are interested in ordering a copy of the Liz Taylor Ring, um, you can comment below while we are live, or you can check out the link that is in the um, in the description and will be in the comments later on and shop that live list for another glitzy, glamoury backstory of excuse me, those who have the all of the fame and fortune, check out Liz Taylor and my Brenda Janowitz. So once again, if you have finished up with Evelyn Hugo and you like some of that set in some of the past um, and some of the backstory of those who have fame and fortune, you may also like this book. It's been out for a little while. It's called uh, City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. It's been out for a few years. Um, and so this is a teenage girl in 1940s um, was when this is set. She was booted out of college because she had a less than great uh, academic performance during her first year. And she gets to live with her aunt in Manhattan um, who owns a theater. And so the protagonist, Vivian, um, comes into contact with quite a few uh, theater uh, people and also brushes elbows with those who are a little bit of some of the higher classes, I guess you could say, who are coming to um, the theater. And so she's got a lot of a lot of learning about herself um, while she is living with her aunt. And there also is a little bit of scandal that occurs while she is in New York. And so she has to deal with that scandal and how it has uh, affected her life in the present and how it will shape her present, her future. Um, we don't have this one in new currently, but this one is only five ninety five, six bucks. Um, it's a used copy in awesome condition. So if you are interested in, once again, some of that backstory scandal -y stuff, check out Elizabeth Gilbert's City of Girls on either in the link um, or you can uh, check out our website. And so my last recommendation for anybody who may appreciate uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, uh, I know I've talked about this one in a previous live as well, um, but it's just such a good recommendation that I just have to bring it up again. And it's a little bit, got some ties to local stuff. Um, so if you like that, uh, the glitz and glamour in the background of those who from the past have had fame and fortune thrust upon them but have worked towards it, um, you may appreciate the magnificent lives of Marjorie Post. Um, so for those of you who aren't as versed in history, like me, right? Um, Marjorie Post was actually um, raised here in this area of Marshall, Michigan. She was actually raised in Battle Creek, which is just hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, and she was not necessarily raised or born into a um, into a well-off family, but she um, married into a very wealthy family, and so she got to be brushing elbows and rubbing elbows with um, Hollywood stars and with presidents. Um, and so she um, did all of those types of things in the, oh my goodness, what is the time? this one. So I would say it's the 30s to the 50s is basically what this covers because it talks about the Depression um, through the Roosevelt's and the Kennedys. Um, so it kind of deals with some of her life in this area, right? Um, it's all, it's all, it's fiction. This is not, this is not her biography, right? 
um, but this is just a fictional uh, take by Alison Pataki, I think is how you say that. Um, we don't currently have this one in use. We have it in new right now, but you can order this through our website, through that link. Um, but I highly encourage you if you like Evelyn Hugo and you're like, oh, I want something else um, that's similar to Evelyn Hugo, I would check out Magnificent Lives of Marjorie Post. So we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit today and we're going to talk about some mysteries and thrillers. So I often get people who come in and say, like, I just like a good mystery. Um, and one of the hottest uh, authors on our shelves right now that we once again can't keep on the shelves is Lucy Foley. Um, she recently released The Paris Apartment, but this is another one that kind of kind of shot her to fame recently. Um, this is The Guest List. Um, and so this is about um, a wedding on an exclusive Irish island. And so there are five people who are mentioned on here, the bride, the, the plus one, right? The best man, the wedding planner, and the bridesmaid. And all of them have some kind of deep and dark secret. And one of them is a murderer. So if you like um, fiction with strong female leads and also with a lot of good mystery in it, a little bit of the psychological um, thriller within this, definitely check out Lucy Foley, but I would check out the guest list. So if you like the guest list, you're probably interested in the other titles that I have to show you. So this is another recent release, and this one kind of in the description reminds me a little bit of Clue, if anybody likes the classic game of Clue. Um, so we've got one called The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile, I think that's how you say Gentile, Gentile. Um, and this is a recent release. Um, it is a must-read mystery of 2022 according to Pop Sugar. Um, and I've heard about this one, and this is actually on my to-read list, and I don't really read a whole lot of mysteries, but I'm really intrigued about this. Um, so there is a murder that occurs in the reading room of the Boston Public Library um, and in the aftermath as everything's trying to be sorted out there are four strangers they're all sitting together at a table um, and so they start to chat with one another and a little known to the three one of them is the murderer so there's a little bit of delving into the lives of strangers and also a little bit of trying to figure out who done it so if you would like um, if you would like kind of a whodunit that also has a little bit of suspense and tense thrilleriness within it, I would definitely recommend The Woman in the Library of Solari Gentile. Another author and another book that I typically recommend um, when people say they like Lucy Foley and they've read all of Lucy Foley's or they want a really good thriller is Sandy Jones. And right now we've got The Guilt Trip. Oops, let me put my finger there. By Sandy Jones in stock, and this would definitely be one that I would recommend if you've read the guest list and you really like that. Um, so let me verify that this is one I'm thinking of. Yeah, so there are five friends that have known each other for a really, really long time, and then um, one of them has a new fiance, um, Allie, and they all go to Portugal for the final or for the wedding of the of the group between the fiance Allie and Will. Um, and while they are there, their secrets that are revealed, right? Um, and then um, there's a secret especially about that that new wife, the one who's not part of the friend group. It's pretty shocking. Um, and so then they have to try to determine how they're going to react to this secret um, and what they are going to do. So this one isn't necessarily um, for those who are wanting the the guts and gore that sometimes come along with thrillers is a little bit more of the psychological type stuff. Um, but if you liked, um, if you like Lucy Foley, I definitely recommend The Guilt Trip by Sandy Jones. We don't currently have this one new, but you can purchase this at our website or you can contact us and we can get a copy of this reserved for you. Another one that's been out for um, a little bit, but is just a classic good seller for us, and I definitely recommend this to anybody who likes the psychological stuff um, in their thrillers and mysteries, um, is The Silent Patient by, and I'm probably going to butcher the last name, but I'm going to try it my best, by Alex Michaelides. Michaelides? Michaelides? Michaelides, I think. Um, but this was a, one of, I think, one of his first books. This is the first one. That, yeah, yes, this is the first one um, that this author has written. Oops, sorry, I've got messaging me um the first one that this author has written and so this has a couple they've got this idyllic marriage um everything seems perfect and then suddenly the husband comes home um after work one day and his wife shoots him five times in the in the face yep and then after that she refuses to speak she doesn't talk at all um, so she's, because she doesn't talk to investigators, police, anything like that, um, she is kind of shuttered away and uh, her, her psychiatrist is um, 
I'm assuming that psych psychotherapists, excuse me, criminal psychotherapist is just intrigued by this notion of her absolute, um, her silence. Um, and so he is trying to figure out what actually happened, what prompted her to commit this violent crime when they seemed everything seemed to be perfect, right? Um, so if you are interested in this uh, book, The Silent Patient, highly recommend this if you like Lucy Foley and you're looking for a new binge read thriller author. Um, we don't currently have this one in use, but you can order this at our website or you can comment below while we are live um, and get yourself a copy of The Silent Patient. Another author that I like to recommend, another book specifically that I like to recommend when people say, oh, I really like Lucy Foley, or I really like the psychological thrillers, um, or ones that deal with relationships of, between family members um, and secrets and twisty type things, I definitely recommend Sally Hepworth's, Hepworth's excuse me, The Good Sister. Um, so this is a um, this one isn't necessarily like one of the, there's a, there's a violent murder that happens. This deals with a relationship and secrets and shock and scandal, right? Um, so you've got twin sisters, Fern and Rose, love the names. They're so, they're so botanical, right? Um, Fern and Rose, and they have always taken care of one another and worked with another, especially Rose has taken care of Fern quite a bit. Um, Fern's a little bit more reclusive, but Rose has just taken care of her her entire life. And then Rose, um, in her, uh, in her life, she discovers she cannot, uh, become pregnant. And so Fern decides that, oh, sorry, someone is just keeps on messaging me. Um, so, uh, let me see, where was that? Um, Rose discovers she can't get pregnant, so Fern decides that this is how she can kind of repay her sister for all of the great things that have, um, that, that Rose has done for her in her life. And she's like, I'll be your surrogate. I'll carry your kid. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Okay. Um, and so she tries to, she tries to find someone who's going to be the father for this so that Rose can have a child, right? Um, but then she suddenly discovers um, some deep, some dark secrets from both her past and from Rose's past um, throughout the cur of this, or throughout the, um, the course of this book. And so then they have to determine whether or not this is something that still needs to occur and how they can deal with one another after discovering some of these dark secrets. So if you end up liking, uh, or if you end if you determine that you like psychological thrillers, definitely would recommend Sally Hepworth's The Good Sister for you. Another great author that I like to recommend um, when people say they like the psychological thrillers, but also they like a little bit of the murder mystery with it as well, I recommend uh, Lisa Jewell. She has a, quite a few um, uh, titles out, but this one is one of the few that we've currently got in stock. Um, because she's one that sells out quite frequently for us. Um, so we've got The Family Upstairs is one of the books that I'm going to talk about right now. Um, and so we've got our protagonist, Libby. Um, she doesn't necessarily, she was adopted, so she doesn't know her, um, doesn't know what happened in her past, um, how she came to be with the family that she's with. And then in her, uh, let's see, I don't know if it says what, what birthday, soon after her birthday, um, 25, her 25th birthday. Um, around her 25th birthday, she gets a letter that indicates um, her, her lineage and where she came from. Um, and she discovers that she is a, a sole inheritor of their abandoned mansion. So she comes from a little bit of money on the bank of the Thames. Um, and so she goes to this mansion um, to see it, um, to live there, etc. And then she doesn't, uh, doesn't know that she's not the only one who's been waiting for this day for her to arrive at that mansion, that there are others that are waiting for her there. And it's not necessarily a great situation. So if you like uh, that tension aspect, and if you like Lisa, or excuse me, if you like uh, Lucy Foley books, I definitely recommend Lisa Jewell, and you should check out The Family Upstairs. You can order this in um, the link uh, by clicking on that link and going to the live list, or you can check it out on our website as well. The last author that I really, really like to recommend, excuse me, when uh, people say they like, um, they like Lucy Foley and they've read through all of her things, is Megan Miranda is another author that has several different books out. Um, so this is one that we currently have in stock by her. It is new. Um, this is called The Last House Guest. Um, and so we've got uh, a little town in Maine. Lots of things tend to happen in Maine. There are lots of books set in Maine. Um, and there's uh, two different sets of people that live in this town because it's a it's a summer touristy town, but it's also got the locals that live there year round. And usually these um, these groups don't really mix together. They don't become friends. They just kind of cohabitate the same space. But there are two um, girls that get uh, 
get very close to each other, Sadie and um, Avery. Sadie's the tourist of the outsider, and then Avery is the, uh, the person who's from the area, the resident, right? And they're best friends until Sadie is found dead. Um, and so it is originally presumed that she um, died by her own hand. However, um, that not is not necessarily what um, what Avery um, Avery believes about this. And so Avery goes on the track for finding out what actually happened and why this actually occurred. So if you like once again those psychological thrillers, um, if you want a good beach read to whip through during the last month or so of summer, definitely would check out Megan Miranda and definitely would check out The Last House Guest. All right, last set of books that I'm going to show you is one of my personal favorite um, genres to do recommendations and personal favorites to read um, because I just really like to read books where people come from difficult situations and are able to overcome that um, through assistance from others and also through their own personal will and um, and strength. And so one of those, and this was one of my, I would say my, I'm going to actually show you all three of my very favorites in this, what I call the tough stuff genre. Um, but in the, uh, the set of, of memoirs or of autobiographies that, um, deal with, with kind of the overcoming, um, situations. So this was very popular a few years ago, but this is educated by Tara Westover. Um, this is about a, um, girl, Tara. Um, and this is her true story. She wrote this herself. It's a memoir. Um, she was raised in a family that didn't necessarily do a whole lot, um, with, they didn't have a lot of a goal or trust in the government. Let's put it that way. Um, I would say kind of doomsday-esque. Um, she was actually around and in the same area and friends with the family from, uh, Ruby Ridge, I think is what it was called. I'd never heard of it until I read the book and then I had to read up on it. Ruby Ridge, the Ruby Ridge, um incident that occurred um, several years ago um, and so she was never actually sent to school she never went to school like her entire life um, but she through her own drive and motivation um, living in the, the hills of Idaho yes Idaho. it's been a while since I've read this book but I just remember loving it um, she determines that she wants to go to college and so through her own will and determination she studies she reads um, she takes the test that she requ is required to and, and passes with enough to go into college. And then when she gets to college, it just shocks her because so much of what she has been told her entire life is not necessarily true. Um, one of my, one of the most interesting parts of this book that has stuck with me um, was that she was in a history class and they put up pictures on the screen and she asked what, what, what it was and what was going on in the pictures. And her classmates and professor got very angry with her because they were pictures of um, people from in concentration camps. And she hadn't known that they actually existed. She'd been told that it was all a myth by her family, um, especially particularly by her father. Um, so this is just a very, um, a very, I would say humbling read in a lot of ways because you learn what people have gone through and what they're able to come overcome um, and also just makes you think about what um, what it means to be somebody who is educated what does that what does that mean so I highly recommend um, Tara Westover's Educated it's one of my very favorite uh, tough stuff memoirs so this is uh, another book that I have not actually read myself it's actually a very recent release um, but it's on my list to read fairly soon um, especially because I really appreciate um, one of her other her fiction books that she has written. Um, this is a memoir called Crying in the Bathroom um, by Erica L. Sanchez. Um, she wrote the young adult book I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter. Um, and so this is about her life. She is the daughter of immigrants um, from Mexico um, and they moved to Chicago and so it just kind of over it's an overarching story um, of what she went through growing up and how she came to um, be herself and what she had to, um, what she had to overcome, what she had to deal with being the child of, um, first, or the first generation child of immigrants. Um, so I highly encourage this one. It's gotten a lot of buzz already on social media and through lots of, um, book review sites that we use here at our store, but I highly encourage you to pick up a copy of Crying in the Bathroom, um, if you are, um, interested in some of those overcoming, 
um, type essays. Now this does have, I would say, I wouldn't say necessarily like deep, dark, tough stuff. It does deal with some of those important themes, but it also has a little, this is a little bit more lightness to it than some of the other books that I'm going to show you. So highly encourage you to pick up a copy of Crying Bathroom. You can check that out on our website, um, or you can comment below if you'd like to order this. Another great book about overcoming obstacles um, that I recommend is Made by Stephanie Land. It's been out for a little bit. Um, this is actually a used copy, um, and it's only $5.95, 6 bucks for this one. So you can reserve that below if you are watching this live, or you can check it out on our website to make sure you've still got it. Um, I know there's also been a film on Netflix, I think, about it, or a series on Netflix about it. Um, but I really encourage this for anybody who liked Educated um, and who likes those overcoming um, difficult situations type memoirs. So this is about a woman, I can't remember her name, Stephanie, yes. She's in her late 20s um, and she is about to get into the uh, life that she has ever wanted, chasing her dreams, and then suddenly she has um, an unplanned pregnancy and so she starts um, taking jobs as um, as a as a maid, right, as a housekeeper, um, to make ends meet. And so she started writing about some of her experiences, not only as um, in, in what she did for work, but also experiences of um, dealing with that unplanned pregnancy and with poverty. Um, and so she just writes with, with, with unflinching um, bravery, I guess you could say is how I would say it. She, she doesn't hold back. She shares what actually happened. Um, so I highly encourage, if you liked Educated, if you haven't picked up a copy yet, check out Made by Stephanie Land. Another a book that you may appreciate that's been uh, around for about maybe a year, approximately, um, that uh, you may appreciate if you like those tough stuff memoirs, is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Sonner. I think I said name Sonner. Sonner. Um, this is a little bit of tough stuff, but a little bit with grief as well. So just keeping that in mind. Um, this is about the author in her mid twenties. She's working at a waitress and she's trying to uh, launch a music career. And suddenly she finds out that, um, her mother, um, is going through the final stage of a battle with cancer. Um, and so this deals not only with that, um, with that incident in her life, but also her reflecting on growing up as a Korean American, I think is correct. Yes. Yeah, her Korea, as an, with her Korean identity um, as an Asian American. Um, and so it, it delves into her relationship with her mother and some of the experiences that she had, um, and also some of the, the difficulties that come when you are, um, are working with somebody and, and, and in dealing with somebody who is in the final stages of their lives. So if you are interested in a great, um, probably a little bit of a tearjerker because it's got crying in the in the title, right? Um, if you're interested in another uh, touching story, I would check out Crying at H Mart by Michelle Sonner. So this is actually what I'm going to show you is my second favorite of the Tough Stuff memoir um, genre um, that I've read in my life, and it's called Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance. Um, this came out several years ago, but this was something that I really appreciated because appreciated because it helped me to look a little bit at my own culture, um, and it helped me to look at uh, the culture of my students. For those of you that don't know, I do teach as well, um, and so when I read this book, some of the students that I was working with I recognized things that they were going through based off of this book. Um, so J.D. Vance uh, grew up, his family situation was not always fantastic. Um, I think this is actually a film recently as well, if I recall correctly. Susan Sarandon is sticking in my head and I'm not 100% sure if that is correct. But um, so he grew up, his mother was in and out of the picture. Um, he grew up with his grandmother who was kind of a, a rough and tumble lady. Um, and so they were dealing with issues of poverty, de dealing with transients, moving around, um, and I appreciated that he looked at how the culture from <clears throat> the, I would say, backwoods of the, of, of the South and of the middle of like Tennessee, etc., um, and Kentucky, when people moved northwards up into the Midwest um, or into the northern northeastern areas, how some of that culture came with and was transformed, but also permeated um, the, the local societies. And so this was just a really interesting book for me to read because, like I said, it helped me examine the culture from where I grew up and also the culture that um, some of my students 
um, were exhibiting and some of the, the difficult things that they were going through and helped me to understand it in a new light. So I highly encourage you to check out Hillbilly Elegy if you've not ever read it. Um, we don't currently have new copies. This is actually a used copy 5 and 5. You can reserve this by um, commenting below while we are live or you can check this out on our website. So this book is not a book that I have personally read, but I, it is on my list to read very soon when I get a chance, right? There's so many books on my list. I think you guys all know that. Understand how that works, right? Um, but this book was recently released. Um, it's called Somebody's Daughter by Ashley Ford. Ashley C. Ford, excuse me. Um, and so she's got a really difficult childhood. Um, this is her memoir in real life. Um, she has a difficult childhood. She's got poverty and she's, excuse me, she's got a difficult relationship with her mother. Um, and she really wishes she could run to her father to her father excuse me to give some kind to get some kind of support but she can't because he's he's imprisoned um and so as her grandmother later on reveals about why he's in prison because she doesn't know why he's in prison she just knows he's in prison um that is something that kind of alters her perceptions of who she is and who her family is and what she should do um and her world is kind of turned upside down so if you once again like family drama memoirs, or if you like those overcoming um, type memoirs, I highly encourage you to check out Somebody's Daughter um, by Ashley C. Ford. You can reserve that below, or you can check out our website um, for, uh, for a copy of this book. All right, the last book that I have for you guys, and this is my very favorite um, of the books that I've shown you, my very favorite of the Tough Stuff Memoirs books uh, overall, is The Glass Castle by Bajinette Wells. This was also a film, um, but definitely read the book because there's always more things in the book, right, guys? Um, this story opens, and I just love the opening for it. It's stuck with me. It opens a successful writer in New York, um, Jeanette, and so she's on her way to, a, or way back, I think, from a fancy schmancy party, and she's in a limo or a cab. I can't remember. It's just, it's just, she's well off. She's well off. Let's put it that way. And she looks out the window, and she sees her mom, and her mom is digging in a dumpster. Um, that's the, that's the very opening of this book. So you kind of, you're like, well, how did you get, how did this happen? How does your mom have be on one end of the spectrum and you're on the other? Um, and so this delves into Jeanette's, uh, family life as a young child. She had a very transient childhood once again, um, like some of the other ones that we've talked about where she moved all over because her family, her parents, um, her mother and her father were kind of, a uh, kind of drifters, I guess you could say, pursuing art and pursuing happiness and love and all of those things. But that also led to a lot of difficulties and a lot of intense poverty. Um, and so this book opened my eyes to a lot of hardships and a lot of ways, once again, that I could see some of the the concerns that Jeanette had, some of the issues that she was dealing with in her life. I could see some of that reflected in some of the kids that I was working with at the time that um, I was reading this, but this is just, I cannot more highly recommend a, um, a tough stuff memoir, but to show how she overcame all of that to get where she, get to where she was being a successful writer who went to college, got degrees, um, and then to still love and love those that aren't necessarily as, as reaching as she is. So highly encourage you to pick up a copy of The Glass Castle if you've not already done so. Well, that's all that I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for walking, for watching, for walking, for watching. Um, if you haven't already done so, like I said, like this video, tag people, share this video um, so that other people can learn about cool books that they might need to have in their lives. Some events to keep on your radar. Um, we are at Lila Palooza in Battle Creek today. It is the last day for that. And tomorrow we should be at the Breaking Bread Bazaar. Ooh, say that 10 times fast, guys. In downtown Battle Creek, put on by Cafe Rica. Um, so come out to those things in Battle Creek and join us. Us and keep uh, watching. I don't remember the dates off the top of my head. I lost the paper. Um, but we will be doing some sidewalk sales in August in downtown Marshall here. Um, you can also check out our uh, stand at BC um, at the Battle Creek Farmers Market every Wednesday throughout the rest of the summer. Um, please get signed up for our newsletter if you've not already done so. You can email us. You can contact us in the store so we can get you signed up. And you can get some of the fun codes to help you save even more money on books, both new and used, um, here in store. A couple of sales we've got going on. Today is the last day for our kids' book sale, so 15% off all of those. And then next week we're going to start some sales on graphic novels and manga, which are, once again, Things that are really difficult for us to keep on the shelves. So uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I look forward to talking with you guys later about some other cool books. And contact us for how we can help you find a new story. Bye, guys.